Hi everyone and welcome to today's painting tutorial that I'm very very excited for. So this is my way of painting ultramarines. Now it's a new project I've come up with called The Emperor's Finest and essentially it's an idea that I came up with because I wanted to have an army with a multitude of different space marine chapters included and to represent their position in The Emperor's Finest they will all have a golden right arm similar to the Death Watch's silver left arm or metallic left arm. So over a Mechanicus standard grey undercoat, I'm going to be using a mix of black by Vallejo and Kalidor Sky, approximately 50-50. So just begin applying that over the entire miniature. And with that first base coat dry, I'm going to be moving on to approximately 70% Kalidor Sky to 30% black. So this first base coat was essentially, that's my shading done now. I won't actually be using any Citadel shades or shades from other brands. So just ensuring that you leave some of that base coat visible in the recesses, just begin picking out some of the detail. Now one thing I did want to mention early on as well is that I did leave these clips relatively long as I didn't want to cut them too short as sometimes I find when I watch painting tutorials myself there just is a little bit too much missing. So I've tried to leave in as much as possible without it dragging on for too long. But if at any point you feel confident enough with what you've seen in any part of the, each clip then feel free to move on to the next step. And now with the second step done, I'm going to be using Kalidor Sky just on its own. Now I know that these as well aren't the traditional blues that would be used for ultramarines, but as I mentioned at the start of the video, this is just my way of painting them. Uh, I did paint an ultramarine about a year ago and this is more or less the same method that I used for that. And my apologies as well if there are some points during the video where I do go a little bit out of focus. I'm currently working towards getting some better equipment for filming, painting my miniatures. Just another thing to mention as well, uh, the brushes that I've been using so far in this video are all just really, really inexpensive nylon brushes that you can pick up on eBay for really cheap. I have mentioned them a few times in previous videos. Uh, this one, for example, that I'm using, it was a set of six for $6 Australian. So really cheap, does the job really, really well. I mean, they don't last as long as more expensive brushes, but they do do the job for things such as base coating, shading, things like that.
And as you can see, the power arm is really coming together now. So with Dead White by Vallejo and Kalidor Sky mixed, as you can see on my wet palette there, I'm just gonna start bringing out the armor even more. And with this part of the process, it will take a little bit longer, but it's ideal to jump between colors, especially if you find that, for example, just there, the lighter highlight was a bit too intense. So I have just jumped back to the Kalidor sky just to tone it down a little bit. And as you can see, I'm just really, really taking my time and being very, very careful as I bring these highlights out further. Now, of course, there are always ways that are faster, but I have never really viewed painting as somewhat a race to get things finished. because I always want my work to look as good as I can possibly make it. With that being said, everyone's different and I can certainly understand if people want to get an army painted so they can game with it as soon as possible. But even just painting at this speed for the occasional character model, it's just a really, really good way to improve. And as the model progresses as well, it really allows your creativity to flow. As new ideas come up.
And as you can see, now I'm just doing tiny, tiny scratch marks on the power armor. Now, these particular scratches aren't deep enough to have taken away the paint completely. That's something I'll get to a little later on in the video. But for now, just really subtle scratches to help bring out the power armor and make it look just that little bit more battle worn, but still nicely highlighted. And at this point, I'm really, really happy with how the power arm is looking, but I still want to just add a little bit more. So I'm just going to pick out specific points with some white. And as you can see, barely anything on my brush. So just in places where you would find that the light would be catching the miniature. And just for some more added effect, I'm just adding some small dot highlights of white, very, very subtle ones, randomly across the armor. Now with this particular step, it's not something that you want to overdo, especially as we progress later on throughout the tutorial when I start turning everything down with uh, greys and browns to sort of muddy up the armor a bit. And now for the next step, and this was actually really quite challenging for me to film this as I've only ever freehand painted the Ultramarines chapter symbol once before, but I did manage to get it down. So I'm really excited to share this part with you as well. So with a base coat of Celestia Grey, I'm just going to begin putting down the outline of the ultramarine symbol. Now, one thing I can't stress enough is to make sure when doing a chapter symbol that you have an image available to help guide you paint as it's that much easier to just have something to either look up at your computer or even if you just have your phone next to you. as that's very much what I was doing as I filmed this. And one thing I'll mention as well whilst doing this step is don't stress too much if you don't get the shape perfectly right initially with the Celestial Grey, as there will be a part coming up in the tutorial where I do go back and correct that with blue. Calidor Sky, I should say.
Now, the hardest thing I found whilst painting this chapter symbol, and I'm sure it would apply to other chapter symbols as well, is getting it even on both sides of the shoulder pad. But if you don't get it perfect on this particular step, don't worry, as I mentioned, we'll be getting to the stage where I use blue to correct that and that'll help even it out. But the most important thing is just making sure that the paint isn't too thick. So with the Celestra Grey step completed, I'm going to be using Ulthorn Grey next. So this is just to begin highlighting. Now I'm not going to be covering the whole chapter symbol as I do want to leave some of that Celestra Grey and at this point as well I should mention the brush I'm using for this chapter symbol is a size one, Raphael 8404. It's an absolutely amazing brush. As you can see, it holds a beautiful, beautiful point for fine detail. Um, a size zero would work as well. And as always, keep the miniature in a comfortable position And as you can see at this point, I have left some of that Celestia Grey out of the highlight because at this point I'm trying to reshape the initial paint job of the chapter symbol just to make sure it's as even as I can possibly get it. So when I go back to the Kalidor Sky, it'll be a lot easier to correct around it as opposed to having more paint to go over with the blue. So just really, really take your time with this step as it's that much more rewarding as well once you get to the end of it. And it looks essentially the same as the symbol that you would look at on Google. And now to clean up the chapter symbol, I'm going to be using Kalidor Sky. And at this point, you can very clearly see what parts need to be straightened out. And doing it this way is just that much easier than trying to get it absolutely dead straight with the Celestia Grey and the Ulthorn Grey. So as I begin doing this as well, just as I'm cleaning it up, just make sure you look over at the other side as well to make sure that it's as even as you can possibly get it. And as you can see, it still wasn't quite even. So I am gonna go back again and just bring that down slightly more.
And now just to bring out the chapter symbol that much more, I'm going to be doing some very subtle highlights of Vallejo Dead White. And as I've mentioned in a few videos previously, this is my favorite white to use because it has a really, really good consistency, but go with whatever acrylic white that you prefer. And again, just really subtle highlights with this white as the Celestia Grey and Althorn Grey and the correcting with the Kalidor Sky has done most of the work. And now for another exciting step of painting this miniature that I had a lot of fun with, I'm going to begin doing some weathering. Now, one of my absolute favorite colors that I've ever used is German Grey by Vallejo. It's just such a useful color for so many different purposes of painting miniatures. So just to make the power armor look that much more battle-worn, I'm going to begin just mostly in the recesses to begin with, just doing some very subtle battle damage across the power armor as well. As you can see, just sort of stifling across the armor. And I'm now back at this point to using just one of my cheap nylon brushes for this. And I'm also going to begin bringing out the pouches, all of the pouches on the miniature and the guns case as well, the guns casing. Now this is one part admittedly I was a little bit nervous about because I was really, really happy with how the chapter symbol looked, but I didn't want it to look too clean. So just as carefully as I can, still using my nylon brush, just so long as you're using a brush that has a fine enough point, just on a downward angle, just start in a dabbing motion, just picking out some of that and doing small line scratches throughout the chapter symbol as well. And with that step now complete, I'm going to be using another one of my favorite colors, actually, Rhinox Hide from the Citadel range. Now, this is where I'm going to start picking out the larger scratches on the power armor. And I'm sure you would have seen this step in plenty of tutorials before, but I have decided to add it in. As again, as I mentioned earlier, I really didn't want to take too much away from this tutorial. I wanted to include as much as possible. And now with some Kalidor Sky and White mixed, just very, very carefully below the Rhinox Hide, just begin picking out the battle damage. And I'm just showing you these two, but I will be doing more, a lot more over the entire miniature. And with the battle damage now complete, I'm going to be moving on to German Grey and Dead White. Now, as you can see on my palette there, I have just put German Grey to one side and then I have added white in and mixed it across. So I have a variety of grey tones there. Now this step is to begin highlighting the pouches. So the pouches, gun casing and the belt as well. So mostly just edge highlighting for this step and doing some subtle small line highlights across the pouches and gun casing as well.
And as you can see on the gun casing, I'm just doing some random scratches. So a little bit of stifling and edge highlighting mixed. When doing these sorts of things as well, I mean, besides the edge highlighting, of course, try not to overthink it. So just start sort of, yeah, as, as I mentioned, uh, stifling and in a random sort of stabbing motion, just start dabbing across the gun casing. And of course, with my mix on the wet palette, I can just gradually, very, very gradually start building up the highlights. And for this step, you can see I've switched back to my Raphael 8404 size one as well. So now I'm going to be moving on to the lenses, the grenade casing, and the scopes on the gun. Now I didn't actually include the grenade casing, but just follow the same steps for that as I have for the lenses. And the scopes as well. So with a base coat of corn red, just as carefully as I can with my Raphael brush, just begin bringing out the lenses and now with Mephiston red just jumping into that color straight away and with each progressive highlight just focus more at the front of the lenses now with some wild rider red as the next step again just focusing mostly on the front and the bottom of the lenses. And red is just always such a great choice for lenses as it does give that beautiful sort of, sort of glow effect. And with this step, just always take your time as it's that much easier to get it right the first time as opposed to having to correct it. So I had to dab that on a few times, but as you can see, I got the white dot of the lens to a point of which I was happy with. And now onto the next step for all of the metal parts across the miniature, I'm going to be using the same method. So a base coat of black metal by scale 75 a highlight of heavy metal by scale 75 and a final edge highlight of Stormhost Silver by Citadel. And I just thought I'd use the metal on the Space Marines backpack here. So just with a base coat of the black metal. And now onto heavy metal, mostly just edge highlights with this step as well, as the Stormhost Silver, I should say, that's coming up. And now just with some Stormhost Silver, just as a final touch. Just focusing on the edges there. And I just thought at the end here, I would point out all of the other parts that I follow this exact step with. Now with this particular step, this really just follows the specific color scheme that I'm doing for my own army. Um, I, again, though, I just wanted to include everything. 
But if you were just painting ultramarines, obviously this step wouldn't be necessary. You could just follow the power armor that I painted earlier on to include as this arm. But with the base coat of Dwarven Gold, I've just applied that over. And now on to Alvin Gold by Scale 75. I have mentioned in videos before that the Scale 75 range of metallics are some of the best that I've ever used. I usually really have, uh, you know, I've quite struggled with uh, getting metallics right in the past. But Scale 75 ones have a beautiful consistency. They're very vibrant. And yeah, easily my favorite ones that I've used. And for the next highlight, I'm going to use Gold by Vallejo. And mostly just focusing on the edge highlight for this. But also some very, very subtle stipling of this gold over the arm as well. And trying my best to just focus this gold elsewhere where the light hits. And now just adding some Stormhost Silver to my Vallejo Gold. Just to bring it out that much more. Just begin following over the same steps with the Vallejo Gold. Now obviously having a very vibrant gold arm against all of the battle damaged sort of darker tone blue it would look a little bit odd. So I'm going back to my German Grey by Vallejo and Rhinox Hide. And mostly just following the same steps that I used to do the power armor damage and darkening it down earlier on.
So now I'm moving on to the base and I didn't actually include it in the video, but I did do a base coat of German gray and a little bit of black mixed in there as well, just across the entire base, including the rocks. So I'm going to be doing a lava themed base. Well, not a very intense sort of lava base, but a sort of subtle cracked earth sort of, you know, from let's say from really intense warfare as uh, these effects won't show up that much there uh, by the end once I've applied the modern earth they'll be very very subtle so just with the base coat of the corn red over most of it but not necessarily over all of it as you can see there just near the feet I haven't done a f I haven't covered it completely and now with Mephiston Red, just sort of randomly applying it across the base. So now just using some Wild Rider Red and just following over the top of the Mephiston Red. And now just as a final touch, just going to begin dabbing on some Fire Dragon Bright. And for this step, I'm just going to begin, once the paint is dry, of course, just begin applying the Mordant Earth right onto the base. Now, one thing I didn't include in this video that I did use was a hairdryer, just on a cool setting, just to help the cracks dry that little bit faster. And you do get some larger cracks by doing so. So now I'm going to be using just a small dry brush by, I believe this one is the Army Painter. So just using some Dawnstone Dry, just to start bringing out the rocks and the Mordant Earth cracks that much more. Now considering that the cracks are very subtle for this particular base, you don't have to be overly careful with the dry brushing process. But again, I really don't have that much paint on the brush and you really don't need that much on uh, the brush when you are dry brushing. So for this next step, I'm going to be using the same reds and orange as I did when I was basing, uh, coloring the base before I applied the modern earth. Now, object source lighting is something that I'm still relatively new to myself, but I did want to go ahead and add this part just to show you how you can bring out the base that much more, especially with the subtle hints of red and orange already under the base visible as well. 
So just sort of randomly adding some corn red there. And not a lot of paint on my brush, just trying to focus on random edges of the base and also doing little hints of red on the rock as well. So now with my small dry brush, I'm going to be using Mephiston Red. And just doing a little subtle hint highlights of the Mephiston Red. And again, just following over the Mephiston Red with Wild Rider Red. And just to finish it up, just a tiny, tiny amount of Fire Dragon Bright as well. And at this point, although I was quite happy with the miniature, I still felt as though there were things missing. So I have decided to add some final touches, such as the pouches, just highlighting the pouches slightly more. So just with some German gray and white mixed, I'm just gonna do some more highlights on those just to bring them out a little bit more. Depending on how far you want to take a miniature, sometimes when you finish it, you painted the rim and everything, it's just a good idea to have a little look at it and decide as to whether or not there are any other things that you want to add a little bit more to. Of course, it's completely up to you, but in this case, for what I wanted to do, I just thought it would be a good idea to bring out those pouches a little bit more. So I'm just showing you the bolt pistol casing for this one. I'd already done the pouches on the other side. So another thing I felt was lacking a little bit as well, especially with the base being completed, I wanted the power armor mostly focused around the feet to be quite grimy and more battle-worn. 
So I've decided to go back and add some Rhinox hide to begin with. So it's quite watered down. And as you can see, I'm just randomly applying it in a sort of messy way across the power armor. And it's important as well for this step to, as I've said, it is quite watered down, but to have it watered down so that you still have, even if only a subtle bit of that blue showing as well. And again, just taking it a step further. Now I'm gonna be using some German gray. Mostly just following over the Rhinox hide steps as well. And again, just make sure it's pretty well watered down. And with that, my Ultramarine for my The Emperor's Finest project is finished. So thank you so much for watching this tutorial today. I hope you found it useful and there will be plenty more Space Marine tutorials to come as that was sort of the main reason I came up with this idea in the first place. So I could do plenty of Space Marine tutorials for you. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.